folks, how are y'all today? Uh, we've got a new project going here with some brand new yarn called Kid Cotton. Um, vibrant colors, uh, very spring-like. Anyway, I, we're doing a bag, um, and not necessarily a book bag. It could be a yarn bag, it could be a project bag. It's just a bag. Um, but I really wanted to do something other than uh, just the scarf because we did one a couple weeks ago. So this time it's actually just doing a whole project and we're going to show you how to sew it, put it on the, uh, complete the whole thing, um, and then be able to see it, the completed item. Okay, so what I did first was I wove fabric, uh, and this is on a rigid head loom. Okay. Um, We've got a couple of things going on with this, but then I also used an equal loom because I needed a strap. Um, you could use twill tape if you wanted to, but in this case, I really wanted to pull the same colors into the handle. Um, Kid Cotton comes in these really nice balls, bright. Um, I didn't use the lighter purple, but I used the three dark light and medium. So, and in the whole project, I actually ended up with uh, two of these, just one of these, but that's gonna depend on your color away and all the colors you may want to add so that may change uh, but overall it was four balls and you can see i didn't even hardly use these um, and then the purple i used sparingly um, all right so in the fabric what i'm going to do is start sewing the actual uh, two ends one has this is where i lashed it on and this one is really kind of odd because you're like why is this tape here um, i do a lot of this when i'm weaving especially for records um, so I put packing tape when it is on the loom on tension. I will put a piece of tape underneath it, fold it over, put a piece on the top. This actually will hold this in place as I take my stitch and go down here. This is now a completed record of exactly what was in the reed. Um, and this gets folded up just like this in my file on rigid heddle. And it is very, you could easily say I want this, you know, black and gray and white or something. You could do different scenarios with it because you already had the layout. So it is a very helpful thing for people who forget to write things down as they go. Just put a piece of tape on it um, at the very end you're, and you're good to go. Um, you could actually write on here with the Sharpie if you wanted to, the dent or something like that if you wanted to. All right, so right now I'm going to do some sewing. So Emily's going to actually come over here and show different views of how I'm sewing this up. Um, and hopefully we're going to be able to get a bag out of here pretty quick. What I'm doing is sewing directly on the other side of the tape, not on the tape, because when I cut it off, I want the tape just to actually sever from the actual material. Really want to back stitch right here to really hold the edge. It's important to do that just because that's going to take some wear and tear on the edges. All right, so on this side right here, um, this was where I'd actually lashed on when I first started weaving, so I have knots. Be very careful with these. You do not want them to get underneath the needle because they will break it in an instant. Um, so I tend to keep my hand way out here. I've got more of an L shape um, when I'm guiding it. If you can, just pick a pick and, and actually just follow it. And that will actually aid you in keeping a much straighter line, okay? I'm not gonna do in the loose section. I'm gonna move into about right here, possibly here, but I'm gonna aim for that one. All right. So I have picked the line that I'm going to sew in. I'm going to back stitch, really make sure that that edge gets really sewn. So right now I've sewn this side um, back stitch real well here. Now I'm going to cut the excess off. So instead of cutting right on the line, I'm just going to move over about a quarter of an inch. My stitch length was very tiny. I really wanted to capture all the warp threads um, just so that I wouldn't have any movement. Um, so now I'm gonna cut this. So here, if I'm looking here, if there's any strings, like this one didn't get caught. Just tidying it up. And then this side with the tape is right along the edge of the tape. The tape actually does aid you in getting a really nice straight edge too. Um, just make sure you don't sew right on top of it. 
So this now is my sample. All right, so we've got both sides cleaned up now on the warp area. What I need to do now is take my band that I wove, um, and it was 40 inches. And I did measure this off tension because I, it is under extensive tension. So I'm kind of just uh, finding the midpoint right here. I'm going to cut it. I am going to lose a little bit of it, but it's so packed in tightly that I don't think it's going to unravel as easily. Um, so I've got this end, and then over here on this end, I need to tidy these up too. This one is really loose on the end. I'm just going to cut it to make sure it's nice and even and nice and even. And so here's my straps. I actually did the same pattern as I did here in the warp. All right, you don't have to do that. Um, so this is basically where it's going to line up at. But before I do this, I don't want the fringe up here. So what I'm going to try to do is give, me, give myself a hem right here. You can use your pins to actually hold it in there. All right. So on the fold here, um, after we have actually done one uh, sewing uh, thread here to keep this from unraveling, we're going to fold this over about a quarter of an inch. I'm not including the fringe. And then I'm going to fold it again this way, lining up my my stripes and this is about a half inch okay so when I pin this all the way through I've got about a half inch here okay and so I'm lining these up I'm gonna go through I'm tucking that raw edge under okay and as I do that notice I skipped my striped this is where this piece I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to tuck him under this way. And that this is going to actually get sewn as I go across. And then I'm going to actually use this as my handle. So this piece right here is part of my handle. Put him in. That's not too straight. I need to straighten that. So as I go across, lining these up, Lining it up. This handle right here needs to go in. Make sure that you don't twirl it, okay, or you're going to have a twisted handle. It needs to be if it's coming in this way, it needs to go in just like that because this is actually going to be the strap. And you want to think about how you're holding it, okay? If you want twist in it, put a twist in it. But I'm, I'm thinking ahead um, on this. So then I'm going to pin this one in here like this to make sure. And as I sew, I'm going to try to make sure that my stripes do line up. Since this is the inside of the bag, you're still just seeing the stripes on the outside. Um, but this will keep things in line. Once I get the strap in there, I may do some tacking here just to hold it vertically like this. Okay, But for right now, I'm going to sew all the way across again. And I'm actually going to do my edges here because that's important so that none of the edges start to unfray here. Go for it. All right, so I have attached uh, the first handle on this side, made sure that it was not twisted. Um, actually, it just lays in there like this. Um, you could do a twist if you wanted to. I did tuck it inside here. Now, to show you all both, make sure that when you put the other handle on there, which I've already done, that I had it's on the inside, okay? Because otherwise, you've got a handle on the outside and then this handle's on the inside. So you need to make sure that they both are button each other or touching each other on that sense. Um, and I did the same thing. And I'm, the handles are pretty much well the same length because I cut them in half. Um, so right now I'm gonna do a seam down here, then I'm gonna do a seam on this side and do my edges here. When you're doing hand-woven fabric, 
there is really no right or wrong unless you have some type of pickup where you have floats. Um, I didn't want floats on these because I didn't want anything to catch it on the inside of the bag. But this side is going to be the same as this side. So that's what's real. You have to be real careful with that. You can put a piece of tape on it if you want to just to know which is back or front. So you could do that. Anything that would help you stay in sync with which side you're sewing on. So now I'm going to do the seams for this. And then we're going to do the sides. All right, so I'm getting ready to sew my hems uh, with the actual strap in it. And from this vantage point right here, um, I don't want to sew in the center. What I'm trying to do is capture that tail, um, the flap. So I'm going to actually sew about just a couple of picks over the fold part here. There's a fold here and there's a fold here. I'm doing the fold that is on the inside. After I come in here, I'm going to backtrack and then I'm going to sew the edge here. All right. You could whip stitch it if you wanted to, but I'm just going to hit it with the sewing machine. Then I'm going to actually try to stay in line with this pick all the way down. Okay. And then do both sides that way. But um, keeping a tape, you know, a measure, you can actually see if your hem is about the same width. All right. Also, I will say before I get started, sometimes pushing in there see how I've covered up my stripe you really want to keep keep a look at this to see if they're lined up and it's a little thick so I need a poker so some, instead of using my finger I'm just actually going to do this just to get it going now I'm going to backtrack as I do this edge Set your needle, okay? Set it, make sure it's going all the way down. And then I'm able to turn this to the side here. And then when I go down, I'm gonna sew the edge, all right? And I'm pretty close to the edge, but I'm gonna go forward, very close. And then I'm gonna hit it backwards. And then reset the needle before I do a turn. That keeps everything pretty much well in line, all right? If you need to practice on a piece of cloth or something first, you could easily do that. Um, like I said, I'm going to, it could be a little fluffy or thick, so I'm just going to make sure it goes. All right. Watching my, um, these lines right here, sometimes it wants to push the fabric forward, all right? So... When you get to the handle, you're going to feel that little bump, okay? And that sewed over pretty well, so that's pretty, pretty much well in there. I will say if you want to iron this down, it probably would help to keep the fold much more flatter. Um, we didn't do that just for purposes of filming it, but that would help. Um, if I was at home, I'd probably iron it. When you get to the edge, sometimes you'll find your fabric is kind of inched forward a little bit. You just want to go a little slower just so that you don't want to get to here and then it all and it be all the way out to here. So as you're going, you need to kind of straighten this up. So as I near the end, I tend to make sure that I have the bottom part and the top part are pretty much well even because otherwise they end up being a little squeezed uh, just off at the very end. So you can see where the edges are, are matching. Don't know how I did that, but that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Set your needle just like I did on the very other side. Now in this case, you're going to turn it this way. And that means you've got to do a reverse stitch. Or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you could go all the way this way if you wanted to. I have a tendency to want to hold my fabric on this side. This is, doesn't work as easy for me, so I'm going to hit reverse. So, So we're back. We've already got the hem done. We've actually got the strap tucked in there. Uh, in order for the bag or the strap to pull directly up, we are now going to fold the strap over the hem part. All right. Then I'm actually going to pin it just so it stays secure in its place. All right. And it's straight. I'm going to take the sewing machine instead of sewing on this fold. 
I'm actually going to sew on this fold, which is then going to tack this down right where I need it to be. If you don't feel comfortable sewing the whole thing to make two lines on the opposite side, just take your sewing machine here and do here if you want to. Or if you want to reinforce, do a square around it. But you're going to have to have a heavy duty sewing machine because of the thicknesses. You're actually going over this twice. Um, the edge doesn't seem to have as much. I'm going to do a line all the way across and see how it looks. Um, so I'm going to start. I'm not going to go around the side because I've already done that. I'm just going to end it straight in. So I'm just going to go to here, back stitch. And so now the handle is pulling directly mm -hmm. from the top of the bag. And it's reinforced, so that's going to really hold some weight. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side now. Also, putting all of this on the inside, if you do mess up like I did here, notice these don't match up. They don't get seen as much because it is on the inside. So you do have a little cushion there about sewing. Okay, so what I've done here is I have taken the bag and I have made the, uh, the good side on the inside. So the, um, and that, like I said, this is hard to see because both sides look the same. The best way to do is look at the, where the handles were, okay? So this is the wrong side right here. And I should have put a piece of tape so we could have seen this all along. It might have been easier. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually just going to sew up the edges, but because I want my plaid or my pattern to match up, I am trying very carefully to pin it that way, all right? Um, I'm going to pin both sides up. Um, sometimes if you want to just pin right where the pattern joins, and then you can work with it in between here. Um, this is a real big, that, that's actually matching up fairly well. And then at the top. So I'm going to do this side, and then over here I've got this pinned here on the other side. All right, so then I'm going to sew up the sides. Um, so on this one, for this side, I'm going to skip this part right here at the very beginning because it's so thick, okay? Um, I'm going to start here and sew here first. I may have to whip stitch this edge right here, okay? Um, because now I'm sewing double, all right? So on the seam allowance on this one, I, you know, I usually stay within a quarter of an inch. I, I want as much bag as possible. If you don't feel uh, comfortable doing that, just move in some, okay? It is easier if you sew, um, if you have it lined up just like this, and then um, just barely put it. You can run a, use one of your lines here, but I'm trying for about a quarter of an inch. Um, so... That bump is really hard there, so you need to make sure. And then as you start, it's going to sink down. And I'm going to back stitch a little bit. I keep stopping and checking just to make sure everything's still in line. If you, you want to know what's going on the under, underside. So that side's secured. I'm going to take these off, my little tails. This side right here, like I said, I'm probably going to whip stitch right here. Um, I just, I think it's really going to be too tight to sew on the sewing machine because of the thicknesses of it. Um, so I'm going to do this side, then I'm going to do this side, then I'm going to show you how to box pleat the bottom so that it gives you a box at the bottom for books or something. Um, you can also do cardboard in the bottom if you want to give it a much secure uh, support at the bottom. All right, so we have uh, both sides of the bag are sewn on both sides. Um, this is a completely woven all the way around, so it's got a really good sturdy bottom to it. So if you're, if you're happy with this type of a sling bag, use it that way. Um, but I was going to show a little bit about box pleating the bottom just to make it look a little bit more finished. Um, it's not that hard to do, it's just kind of more difficult to show people. I've actually put my hand inside the bag where the seam is. You can see this is the seam that I had before. If you turn it over this way, what you're doing is you're putting the seam in the center 
and then as I take my hand, my hand's underneath here, right here, and I'm pressing. So what I have here now is a triangle, okay? So this is where it gets kind of tricky. You want to, you're going to end up sewing either across here or across here. I did strategically put a stripe in here at a certain place so it would give me a guide is what I was doing. So I'm going to sew um, a certain length down. All right. So if you have your ruler and you're going to say, where am I going to sew? Am I going to sew two inches down? If you want to do that, take your pin and pin this triangle. You want it to be straight. If it's crooked, you're going to have a crooked line. All right. And so I can sew all the way across here and I'm basically sewing this little triangle. Before you sew this, make sure the other side's going to do the same thing, so they're both symmetrical, because your, your square at the bottom doesn't need to be smaller. It needs to be the same width across, all right? So this is quite important to measure. Two inches looks pretty good. So I'm going to come over here to the other side, and I don't think my line's matched up too well, but I'm still going to go two inches from the point, okay? So when I do this... I've made the triangle two inches. It is hitting right here where the other side was. So that's my visual right here. I do make sure that the seam, this seam, if you're sewing this way, it does help for the seam to lay down because then it doesn't get caught underneath your presser foot. Um, just depends on how you sew. So if you want to sew this way, I'm going to lay my seam down. And once again, I'm measuring two inches, and that's about right here where this needle is. All right, so I'm getting ready. I've got the triangle in the sewing machine. I do make a point. I don't want to start right here on the edge. I'm going to start about here, and then I'm going to back stitch, and then I'm going to come forward. It's just easier to already have the material in the presser foot than it is to jump over that. So I'm going to put it in, lay this one down. sink your needle. Okay, make sure you're not going to run over this one. So I'm going to take it out. So I know where I'm lined up to about right here. If you need to check again, you want two inches. Or that's what I've chose. So I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to go backwards. When you get to this seam, make sure it's kind of laying down, it may be, it, you'll feel it go over a bump. So to understand what this is doing, when I turn this inside out to the bag, you actually have a box pleat here. All right, so this would actually be the bag is now having a box pleat. All right, so this gives you a much more distinct bottom to it. Um, and people will think you're fancy when you get this one done. <laughs> so I probably will show you, um, after all this is done, how to take a piece of cardboard um, and then cover it if you want, just to lay it in the bottom, especially for books if they're heavy. Um, if it's for yarn or something, it just would be an added uh, little support. All right, so we have the box pleat done at the bottom, and um, I'm going to show you how to just do a little tuff right here that'll give the bag a pleat. And it'll make sense once I've, um, I'm back on the inside of the bag, uh, wrong sides, I should say. Um, and I've come up here from this part to about uh, maybe a couple inches down and an inch over. Once again, make measurements just to make sure. This one I'm going to go an inch and a half in and about two and a half inches. I'm just using this uh, plaid part right here as a main thing. Um, I have got a piece of the same uh, yarn that I have used for warp and weft, um, and I've doubled it. And I'm not, I don't have a knot in it yet. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to go directly through, making sure I'm coming up in about the same place, okay? 
and maybe about a half inch. You can see what I just did here, a couple of rows. I don't, I'm not doing a knot, so this is just free, so don't pull it all the way through. Take your needle, go back in, do it again, but this time you're gonna cinch, okay? Now I have these two here that I'm actually gonna do a knot. And I did it over, and just to be secure, this. So that when I cut here, it's basically just a cinch. This is similar to what you can do here, where we're gonna whip stitch here. That's the box pleat. I'm pulling it all the way through. You don't have to do this if you don't want, it's just another added thing. Um, so from the side that I did the actual tuff, which is right here, it, it actually gives you a pleat here, all right? So when your bag is like this. I've also got a piece of cardboard that I did um, that I'm gonna, you can cover this in a color similar to this if you want, uh, just in hot glue it if you want. Um, but this would go in the bottom of your pleat, and this was, will be added support for the bottom. So as it's sitting this way, you can see it now has a bottom. And there's my pleat here with the handles coming up. So it's a bag. Okay, so uh, we have finished constructing our uh, handbag or book bag or yarn bag or project bag. Um, and this is the tufts that I just showed you how you can pleat it in and do that. I've got the bottom in there. Um, with the handle up like that, you see that the handle is fully supported coming out directly. It's got a pleat. Um, my design, I actually made it so that the plaid would be front and center. Um, and this uh, purple line down here was just basically a line I did just to help me with my pleat. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, but anyway, it's got the pleat at the side, the handle at the thing, so it's going to make a great project bag. So uh, challenge yourself. Try this one. Um, and the kid cotton wove up very, very uh, nicely. Mm -hmm.